Secretary, let me ask you about your testimony last week before the Senate Judiciary Committee when New Jersey Democrat Cory Booker really exploded over on you over language that the president may or may not have used in the Oval Office meeting on immigration. Here's an exchange. The commander in chief in an Oval Office meeting referring to people from African countries and Haitians with the most vile and vulgar language. I had tears of rage when I heard about this experience in that meeting. You don't remember. You can't remember the words of your uh, commander in chief. I find that unacceptable. Your silence and your amnesia is complicity. I was, I, I mean, what did you make of Senator Booker's uh, behavior toward you? Well, to be honest, it was it was a distraction, and it was very frustrating to me on behalf of the men and women of the Department of Homeland Security because I was there to talk about real threats and their needs to do their job that the American people has asked them to do. And it became 11 minutes of a lecture about a meeting he was not in, about one word and whether or not I heard it. I said under testimony, was it possible? Sure. I just didn't hear the word. That was it. There was really no story there. He didn't ask me what I think. He didn't ask me what I think about the countries. He didn't ask me what I think about immigration policy. He had no interest in what the Secretary of Homeland Security thinks. He just wanted to lecture me for 11 minutes. Right. So it was, it was unfortunate. It was an unfortunate waste of all of our time when we could have been focused on the needs and, and threats that uh, we have. It, it felt to me like harassment. Did you feel harassed? Well, I felt that it was just inappropriate. That's a workplace environment. It didn't seem constructive to me. It didn't seem productive. It wasn't a conversation. There wasn't any opportunity for me to explain how I feel, which I would think is would be what he would be interested in as the Secretary of Homeland Security. And again, he wasn't even in the meeting. So it was a bit confusing as to why he felt that it was appropriate to tell me what I heard and didn't hear when he wasn't even there. All right. Well, it seemed obviously like he wanted a platform uh, so that he could do a show. Maybe he wants to run for president. How is the new job going. You handled that very well. Tell oh, us you. uh, your observations uh, from, from this new role that you have. I am just so proud of the men and women of DHS. You know, many of them put their lives on the line every single day. Uh, we have a huge portfolio. We have many threats. Uh, but it's a great job. I, it's my, the honor of a lifetime to be able to support them and to be able to protect the American people. What should we expect from the president tomorrow? I think what his message is going to be is America first is not America alone. We need to partner. You know, as I said earlier, not one of us has the ability to do this alone. So we need to partner with the private sector. We need to partner with our allies. We've seen that in discussions with North Korea. We've seen that in Syria. We've seen that in Iran. We have to build coalitions to be able to attack these threats together. I think, I think that's what you'll hear a lot about. Is there a threat from North Korea currently on the ground, Homeland Security, that we should be aware of? Well, what we worry about, of course, is with the missile testing and ongoing uh, uh, nuke program, what that means for us. You know, should they develop the capability to be able to reach the United States, I want to make sure that we're prepared. What does that mean for the homeland? So that's everything from alert and warning systems, and we've seen lately that we need some work there to connect, but also means being prepared for those consequences, if any, should occur. Secretary Nielsen, it's good to have you on the program. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Kristen Nielsen there. We'll take